Hey there, happy Tuesday. Thanks for joining me for a craft night with friends. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make cute embroidery kits for beginners. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time, and it's a time that we can relax and craft together and just chill from the day. Uh, all right, so tonight I am continuing on my tatted letter T zipper pouch, and we are gonna finish putting that letter T, like finish stitching it on onto that pouch. Uh, we got pretty far yesterday, so I'm excited about that. Uh, and then if we have time, I think I have one other little tea left over, a little tatted tea, and I thought we could add that to that jean jacket shirt that I have that I've just been kind of applicating things onto it. And this just seems like the perfect little thing. We've been working uh, through, uh, through the holidays and through this month. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna be working on finishing and just yeah, wrapping up a lot of these small little projects uh, that I got laying around here. Uh, just cleansing the palette, uh, and then we'll start fresh with a new schedule uh, in February. So that's the plan for this month, finishing up all these little guys, and I'm just enjoying it for sure. <laughs> all right, so let's get going tonight. Okay, so here we are. Uh, our letter T, like it just kind of exploded here. So everything around here is um, what's going to go back into this pouch when I'm done. So this is going to be my pouch dedicated to tatting, hence the T. T is also for Thomas, which is my last name, but I like that it's a tatted T. I think that's fun. So we are applicating it to this zipper pouch, and I actually had to open up the... Uh, the lining piece so I could get my hand in there. I actually put a piece of paper in there that's kind of behind the T right now so I don't accidentally stitch to the other side. Uh, so anyway, we started at the bottom and I've been just going around the outside minus the, um, the picos. I haven't been touching these little loops at all. Just on the outside edge and we got all the way through to one side and I'm gonna come around and do the other side tonight. And then like I said, I do have that second letter T uh, this one's crazy. I mean, they're both kind of crazy, but this is the one where we tried to use those tatting instructions from 1915 that were <laughs> like unfollowable. Uh, but hey, we've sort of finished it. Uh, this one definitely looks more like the picture. Uh, this was my pattern that I just wrote from the, from the photo instead because this was acting crazy. But I do have that, um, that jean jacket. So this is where we've been sewing the little appliques on. So we have our little heart embroidery and this has been through the wash a bajillion times already and it's it's looking totally fine and then we also have another applique where'd it go Oop, the other side maybe yep so here we got a tiny little acorn that we uh, embroidered and then applique onto here as well and that's gone through the wash as well so that's fine so i was kind of thinking uh, oh, it is. It is Ledger Fabric. Um, it's by Carolyn Friedlander from a few uh, from a few years ago. But it is. It's totally Ledger Fabric. I think she was in architecture before she became a fabric designer. So she's got a lot of that sort of thing. So I kind of am thinking that we put this letter T on on the uh, <laughs> on the pocket here. I think it's just super silly and just kind of a perfect little spot for it. Like it's. Like it's a letter jacket almost, or a little name tag. So adding to our little collection of fellers on on the jean coat. Actually, so for so we'll have like three things on here. I cannot wait till my um, speed weave darning um, contraption comes because this has a, a lot of holes that were kind of built in. Not kind of, they were built in. Like this is just like a funny little you know, meant to look totally worn, but I thought it'd be fun to actually repair these holes with that speed weave um, darning tool when it comes in. So I think that'd be, that'll be fun. So this is just gonna be, we're gonna just keep adding appliques to it, adding embroidery and apparently now tatting. So when we're done, um, done with the zipper pouch here, I thought we'd just start up on, on that right away. So, all right, I'm gonna zoom you guys down in here again, and uh, let's get to finishing this design. Uh, so, I don't, I don't actually think I'm going to 
sew this up tonight just because we do have to get the sewing machine up here and that's just annoying. So um, I think I'll leave this open, but then tomorrow, well, we'll probably still, still be working on stitching this um, onto the shirt. But I do want to, like I said, I have this zipper pouch of the swan that we uh, hand quilted. And I, I folded, if you know how to do a zipper pouch, you, you have to fold the zipper at some point when you're, fold, when you're sewing all the way along the edge. And I folded it in the wrong direction, which made these huge puckers, which I'm kind of upset about. So I'm gonna unpick, I'm gonna like turn this, like undo this and uh, um, pick the sides out and then try and re-sew this where I do it the correct direction. So we're gonna do a repair on this so when I do that repair, I will also sew this shut. So we are gonna just crank out these little projects that I got hanging out here. All right, so I have my little needle minder here that just held our, um, my needle when I wasn't using it. But we are good to go. I should, I can still, I can just continue where I left off. So I don't have to stick my hand in here to guide anything because I did put that stiff piece of paper under here. So I'm just kind of stitching up against that paper. Uh, Rabbit and Meerkat. Um, so I have not tried needle tatting yet. Um, uh, re they're asking, do I, do I prefer needle or shuttle tatting? So right now I am in very, very much into shuttle tatting, which I just started. I, I you know, not a pro, I just started. Um, I just learned basically. Um, but I am very curious about needle tatting and, and I've heard a lot of people say that they like needle tatting and, and they've showed me videos and stuff. So I do want to try needle tatting. But sort of for me, the uh, what makes me like learning things, like these different craft things, is when there's like some secret mystery. <laughs> behind it and in my head the secret mystery is like how the heck do you use one of these this is a tatting shuttle and to me that is the whole entirety of why I wanted to learn how to tat is just like how do you use this tool so now now I feel like I've cracked that nut and and now I I, I you know I'm still interested enough um to learn needle tatting, but there have been times with other crafts that I'm just like, eh, okay, I know how to do it now. I'm 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 kind of done. <laughs> that's all I wanted to know. Um, so that's the big thing with tatting was using the tool. So I guess that I'm I'm interested in learning needle tatting because I am now getting into tatting in general. Uh, but the real deal was like the mystery of the t that tatting shuttle. Oh, you went to Michael's and couldn't find a shuttle? Eh, that's a bummer. Um, yeah, a lot of times they'll have like the Clover brand ones, but I don't know. Some uh, some Michaels are different than others too. It's always a little hit and miss, hit or miss. We have the cute colorful ones in the in our shop right now. We just got our new new ones in. But yeah, it's nice to get it local though too, from your Michaels. Oh, same, but I did buy the supplies to try it. Oh, the portability of tatting can't be beat. Yeah, so that's that's um, what I'm pretty excited about. I think I got excited about that when someone mentioned that their grandmother always had a tatting shuttle in her apron pocket and then could take it out whenever while she was cooking. And I'm like, oh my God, that's so cool. I want just a tatting shuttle just hidden in my pocket. And uh, it's like an emergency craft project just there whenever. So I do really, really love um, that aspect of it. It really is a teeny tiny craft, isn't it? Like, you know, I, I like embroidery. Um, you know, that's what, that's what I do is embroidery and uh, you can get like some pretty small projects with that too, but it's still never going to be as small as um, tatting. And it seems like, you know, I'm not a pro. I haven't done a lot of tatting yet, but it seems like a lot of the patterns out there are repetitive. Like you, you do one sequence kind of over and over again, or at least around like, or like a, a row or whatever. 
will all be very similar. So it it's almost like you get the your count going and then you know what to do. So you wouldn't even need to bring like a pattern around, like if it was just in your pocket and you're just, you know, I don't know, going to the grocery store or whatever, and we're gonna wait in line. Uh, you wouldn't need to read a pattern and all that because you you would know your little sequence already theoretically. Oh, Christy, Christy says that Hobby Lobby has shuttles. Okay, that's interesting. I would like to think that Joanne's would too, um, but who knows? I don't know. Who knows? Maybe maybe with TikTok and everything, maybe uh, it'll get to where stores are going to need to have them again because people are going to want to do it. So here I need to kind of hold down. This little guy's kind of hanging out there. I don't have him pinned, but it's just basically going to go straight down like this one. So I'm just going to kind of hold it in place. I'm just turning just to get comfortable. I think this is good. I'm really happy with these small stitches, like I'm with my thread that I'm applicating here. I, I thought you'd be able to see the stitches a whole lot more, but they're just kind of sinking into the um, like the thread here. So I'm liking that. Just yeah, let's just we're just gonna keep rotating. The paper's kind of too big for me in here now. Well, here I'll go like so. Is that tee made with size 10 cotton thread? I am actually not sure the size. So I, I have a different project um, that I need to figure out different sizes of this. This is all from my grandmother's stash that I that I acquired when she passed away. So none of them had labels on them. They were all different sizes. Um, so I don't actually know the size, but I am gonna go to uh, Joanne's like I don't know sometime when I get out again uh, and I because I need to find I need to do a repair on a different um, like a tablecloth so I'll show you guys that project at some point here soon but again I, I, I don't have any thread that's small enough and I don't have any labels for what the thread is so I'm gonna go I'm gonna go to Joanne's and at least figure out the sizes of, of this thread and make notes so I'm gonna bring all the thread with me and compare it to other thread that's there because I have no idea. It's like cotton crochet uh, thread though. I don't know if that helps at all, but yeah, because it doesn't, that's not a size or anything. Uh, this did seem pretty big though. I mean, uh, I've since stitched with um, or tatted with 12 weight sewing thread, which is itty bitty. Um, it's it's kind of fat for sewing thread for the sewing machine, but for tatting it was so small. That's that's what this one is. So it's like I don't know a quarter of the thickness of um, like look at the the picos, the different size, the thicknesses of the pico. So that's totally different. Um, so that's been kind of fun working so tiny. Oh, rabbit meerkat said I learned with silk thread, and oh, only now trying out cotton thread. Oh, there's no room for air with silk. Oh, interesting. I'd love to try that. So in my head, silk thread would be really thin, but I'm sure that comes in different sizes too. I do not own any silk thread, as far as I know. It'll be fun to try something though. Oh, so Carolyn says that Oh, Carolyn says that I got my shuttle at Joann's and they were in a two pack. Perfect. That's great because with tatting, you do more than likely need two. So for my little snowflakes, for, for these, I only needed one shuttle because this is just a simple, simple like rings going in the same direction. Whereas like with, with this guy, I'm making a, a second one right here and, and it requires two shuttles um, and some some tatting will say that you only need one but then you might need like the rest of the ball of yarn with or the or the thread like I might like you might need a shuttle plus 
you know, this hang out with you versus just being able to snip it off. Um, I think that's called on the ball tatting. Uh, it just, each pattern is, requires something a little bit different as far as that goes. But yeah, so two shuttles is, is smart. This was done with two shuttles. So this was done with two shuttles, but I probably could have done this one on the ball as well, if I, if I remember right. Because like if you're doing chains or like reversing your work and that sort of thing, you need, you need either the ball or that extra shuttle. The shuttle just kind of stores. Um, if, if it's on the ball or, and on the ball might be the wrong term, but I think that's what it is. Um, if if it if it's required if it's on the ball then you can either use on the ball or a second shuttle typically and the second shuttle is just like storage for thread but then there's other patterns where you do actually need two shuttles because you need to actually go through the motions on with both um Amy is asking, Alyssa, are you finding you like the bobbin style tatting shuttle where you could twist the yarn out versus um, the winding so that's this shuttle versus like this shuttle so this shuttle i did a TikTok on this uh a couple days ago i think to um but yeah so this is the shuttle that has the bobbin in so you wind you wind the bobbin and uh, uh then it doesn't have any opening on the sides whereas this one it has openings on the side because this whole piece acts as a bobbin so you're kind of winding around the whole thing whereas this you're just winding around the center and then like popping it in i'm sure there's way 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 better versions of this but this particular one that i have i do not like at all <laughs> um i do like the the crochet hook so this is the crochet hook is really really great for um doing joins um so when you're hooking like one pico to another pico that's a that's a join or one pico to to your thread um so that's really helpful to have the crochet hook so i'll definitely like keep this near i mean you you have this this pointy end here but sometimes if it's real little uh the crochet hook is is nice so i do like that but man this particular one i think there's like some extra you know little plastic shards on the end here you know it's just some cheap cheap thing so there's extra there so that catches on the thread this one's a little bit longer so i feel like i have to work a little bit harder to go back and forth so i don't like that and this does not unwind well whatsoever in in mine um if i don't if i hold it right in the middle then it doesn't move at all if i hold it like far away then i can sometimes pull more off but it does not it does not move well so i have to actually kind of like manually unwind it but it's mostly the size uh, is a little too big for me, a little long, and um, it just keeps catching on that horrible little plastic. Actually, I could just sand that off, maybe. But I do like that hook. So I would potentially, one day, if I still am doing this a lot, um, maybe find a new one, like a fancier one, like maybe like a splurge one, like, like these ones that I got for funsies for Christmas for myself to feel fancy. Um, maybe I would invest in a, a, a different one with, with that hook in, but other people just, um, if you know, other tatters I've, I've seen who like, uh, the shuttles with the two ends open like this. Um, sometimes they just have an extra little tiny crochet hook that they kind of just have on hand all the time. I mean, I, I don't like the idea of having another thing. That's why it's cool that those other ones have it built in. So I don't know. I, I definitely, there's benefits to it that make me want to give it a better try. I just think it's that particular one that I have has a couple design flaws, I think. But man, having that hook on board, that crochet hook is, sounds awesome. Sylvia says, I saw one person had multiple bobbins for shuttle. Oh, so she could switch out. Well, that's interesting. So that's a benefit that you can just switch out the bobbin and throw in another color. That's kind of cool. 
Oh, before I go off, can you copy? Can I copy the instructions for the snowflake? So, yep. So here is if you just wanted to do a screen grab. This is for the very simple uh, version of this. Um, this is where I don't have little chains in between each, where it's just like a little string. Um, so this is at the most basic, I think, uh, pattern. Um, this is this only uses one one shuttle. Uh, so ring one, two, this is ring three through five and ring six. So if you want to take a screen grab, that is it right here. Uh, so that's fun. I would, I'd, I'd love to make those again uh, too. That was just fun. I, I made a bunch of those to put on Christmas cards. I think I have one here yet. Ooh. Yeah, so here's, here's my last Christmas card that I've been waiting to, to give out yet, but yeah, so that's that's the same same design used using here too, and then we just added some French knots and embroidered stuff around it. But yeah, so that one's nice and easy. Ooh, this little pico's in the way. All right, well, we got the top stitched on. That's great. So now it's basically formed. This one was flopping around all over, but now it's it's real nice. So, uh, and I mean, it looks like this is just floating on here. That's what I love about it. Um, you know, the Pico still move, has a lot of dimension. So that's, that's fun. Very much liking how this is ending up here. I was a little unsure of what this is gonna be like. And I mean, it's kind of crazy on this fabric and it's very busy and everything, but I like it. I think it's silly and fun. Oops, shoot. Well, I always do that when I have about this length of thread left. There we go. I always pull it off the needle. I think I'm gonna have like just enough for this letter T. We're getting there, almost done. Yeah, I do still have to sew up that inside, but like I said, we'll do that um, later when when I work on that other zipper pouch that I want to fix. I love this. Like I'm getting all these little plate, all these little objects are finding a home, and uh, I'm finishing up some repairs. Like this is gonna be great. Great month of just kind of cleaning up shop, basically. Finishing up all these little, like I gotta hem some pants. Like it's just like getting all those like tiny, silly sewing projects just done and out of my mindscape, basically, is, is, is the deal. Oh, Rock and Robin says I'll have to remember how you did it. Maybe I'll try and um, uh, maybe I'll try and do a video on it. So, well, first of all, all um, when I was stitching them, all of those videos are saved on YouTube. So if you go to Penguin and Fish on YouTube, there will be like a little tatting thing, or just or just do a search once you're on my page for for tatting, and those videos will show up. So I I did go through making those live and those are saved um in in full on uh on youtube but maybe i'll do a uh it'd be fun to do like an abbreviated TikTok review of how to do it too i think would be fun Oh, anyone continuing with your art swap? So I do have, um, so I was doing that art swap with friends. I do have these two new little fellers from, <laughs> from my friends. So my friends and I did an art swap um, from like August to December. But these are the, so I got these and one other friend. So I'm still missing, I'm missing a little piece of art from one more, one more friend. But this is a little, little watercolor and this cute little lady lady here 
are just so fun. Uh, so that was from an art swap. Um, yeah, and I, I did those, those, um, the, uh, those little mini floral embroideries for them. So I, it was, uh, so I did five of them for, there's six of us total and, and, um, yeah, that was super fun. So I received three actually. So I'm missing two yet. Man, two ladies gotta get, gotta get cracking on their art. <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, but that was just a lot of fun. So just in the middle of, like, winter and COVID and all that, just to get, like, little tiny pieces of art in the mail was so fun. Oh, Rabbit Meerkat says we should do, like, a snowflake a month tat along. Oh, my God, that would be fun. Okay, so I've been so... Oh, man, maybe I just need to bite the bullet and buy some. But I've been looking at a bunch of these... Um, a bunch of like tatting books online and uh, you know there's like snowflakes seem to be like the jam of tatting <laughs> everyone just there's like you know a zillion snowflake patterns but they're all just so fun i would love to just buy a bunch of them and uh, do a pile of different snowflakes because we did you know we've done we've done this one and i did that one big oh yeah here it is <laughs> this is before I knew what I was kind of really doing, but, you know, so, like, a bunch of different styles of snowflakes like that, ugh, would be so fun. We should put together something like that. That would be neat. And that's just perfect, like, that's all I need to tat is some snowflakes. Although, I, I do want to do more of these letters. I'm going to have to do more of these letters, too. Oh, Catherine said I could tat their initials. That would be a really fun little uh, little project, I think. Yeah, I definitely want to rewrite these instructions and do that, though. That'll be a good project. Working on that tatted alphabet. All right, I think I have, like, maybe two more stitches, or maybe even one. One more stitch, and I think we're... We've got this. We've got this appliqued. Yep, so, all right, so this is going to be my last little bit. I'm going to go around the spot one more time. I think I'm going to, ooh, that's a little, a little far away. Um, I'm going to do it one more loop around, and then I'll just tie a knot and try and kind of pull it to, to the back. Yeah, I think I'm just going to try and tie a knot around right here. Real little. With just enough floss. There. And I'll just pull it to the back and just kind of come up a little bit ways away. Just give a little tug on that to kind of get that knot to pop there. I felt it pop through to the back and I think that's all we need to do. I'm just going to throw throw my needle at my needle minder so I don't lose it. And let's snip that. Okay, I'm going to pull that piece of paper out of here and uh, um, this guy's basically done. Oh, Teresa says that's one of my New Year's goals is is crocheting snowflakes. Oh, man, I got to get in crocheting again, too. I have a, a book with more than enough um, snowflakes. It's just to make a plan. Ugh, that sounds like fun. Man, I want to do crocheted. Like, it'd be fun to do crocheted and tatted snowflakes and just have, like, the grouping of them um, just to see how different they feel. All right, so I do have to, like I said, sew this shut again, but I'm going to wait um, on the sewing machine until I, I do this project as well, so in a couple days or something. Um, but I'm gonna stuff it back in here just to see like the final look of this. <laughs> it's pretty cute. Oh, nope, I did not go through both layers of fabric. I'm totally good to go, and it is because I put, I just had um, that second version of, of this pattern. This is that, um, oh, the Sparrow Spite pattern. And I just had a second copy folded up, so I just stuck that in there. So it didn't go through at all. If anything, it just probably scraped this paper a little bit. So no biggie. And, ah! <laughs> it's cute. Got the cute little zipper. So this is going to be my tatting, my tatting bag. So whenever I want my tatting supplies, it's going to have, just to review what's in it, it's going to have a scissors, 
uh, with its little guard. Uh, it'll have whatever tatting project I'm working on, so these guys will go in there. Um, any random patterns, I've been kind of like, these are some old, like this is me trying to rewrite the letter T, I should really just type these up. And you know, here's the tatting <laughs> card idea. Oh god, this is me trying to figure out the design. So some of these I'll probably just keep in there. Um, I'll keep, you know, those alphabet instructions, just trying to like, at, at least for that image and, you know, so all this will live in there. Probably these other projects until I do something with them. Uh, last little snowflake feller. Um, this guy, so I have a needle and, uh, and my other tatting shuttles. Those are gonna live in there as well, so. My cute little bag of stuff is almost ready. And uh, the tea for Thomas and for tatting. And it is tatted, so I should know at a very quick glance that this is my tatting bag. And I'm really happy with it. So again, all we have to do is sew that lining shut at the bottom, and then we're good to go there. So that turned out really cute. And it does just look like it's floating on there. This is totally secure. I'm not worried about it at all. Um, awesome! So, all right, I want to do the same thing uh, with my um, coat here, or this, this, uh, my jean jacket feller. Um, so I'd like to at least get my applique pins out and get this kind of figured. Man, I need to clean my whole area again. It's getting crazy again here. Um, so this, so again, this is my jean shirt that uh, John got me for the sole purpose of putting stuff on it. And it's cute and warm. It's my house, my new house coat, basically. Uh, so we got this guy on there. This was just a little applique piece that we stitched first on the fabric and then appliqued, just like how we did this in the exact same way. We just stitched around the edge, stitched it on. And this little, the stem is actually embroidered right to the jacket and then we have um, this guy on here the little heart on the sleeve uh, and now I want to add and I think we'll do this pocket because this one has kind of a lot of whole stuff in but this would be fun to use that speed weave and kind of darn up as well uh, but I, I want to do the same thing that we just did but put like the letter T on the pocket <laughs> it's just so silly we have this extra letter T so let's get this kind of flat and I'm gonna put some pins in it just just to like mark the spot because I, I think I'm gonna to want to open this pocket and then I'll just stick my hand in there uh, to stitch but I don't want to open the pocket until I have it sort of pinned down because it's just barely fitting in there and I don't want the pocket to cover it up so let's just um, that's pretty centered so now these ones this one does not have the little T's coming down just because I can't read that pattern from 1915. I didn't like it had like these, it's, it tried to do that right here, but it just, it just wasn't working. So this one, I'm just going to go like straight out, um, like a straight out T. It's not going to have those little, uh, little bits that come down like this one did. Um, so it'll look a little bit different, but let's just kind of mark. I guess the center is almost this point here, right? So let's kind of scooch it to the center and I'll get um, some of these little applique pins. I'll probably have to replace this pin because I might go through several layers of the jean here, but let's just start. Oh man, I feel like I'm getting a zillion projects done. This is awesome. All right, now I'm gonna undo this. I'm assuming this is like a real pocket. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, good. You never know with women's clothing if it's gonna be a real pocket or not, I suppose. Um, all right, so let's get some more pins in there. I wanna lay it flat. Okay. Oh, thanks, Justin. Justin says the initial looks beautiful on, on the pocket. I think it's just, it's kind of a, like cutesy, a cutesy idea, I think, having having it on the pocket. Um, like it's a name tag or like a little kid's um, shirt or something. <laughs> okay, I'm having a hard time getting that in there, so let's try right here instead. 
Okay. So I, I have actually already pressed this one to... I tried to actually press the heck out of it because these were all twisted and wobbly all over the place. Um, so I had to press them just to get them in any order whatsoever. So, okay. Do I want these to come straight out? I think probably, huh? Like, I don't want to just try and turn them down. I think that might... It's kind of cute though. All right, let's let's just I'll make sure that the second little circle here feels straight out because I don't I don't want it to look like like this weird like you know M coming out of the top which it's it, it's wanting to do. So I, I want to at least get the second bit so it, it's held down and not making that M shape. And then I can decide if I want to turn these ends down or not. Applicate panels, here we go. And as we stitch, I can probably maybe try and open these up a little bit more because they're pretty weird. Okay. I think I actually have to pin this kind of middle area down. Ugh, it's so bulky and weird. Okay. I don't know, it just looks a little sad going um, down like that. I think I'm gonna just, I'm gonna put this one out right. Then it's, then it's different than the other one. I'm not sure I need to actually add more pins. I think we're probably fine. We'll do it anyway. Just as a reminder that we're going straight out at least. All right, I need one more. These are my little applique pins. Their feature is basically that they're tiny, <laughs> so I think I'm less likely to stab myself. Oh, I think I'm gonna wanna put one in the middle here too. Yeah, his belly's a little wiggly. This uh, thread is so tight because it's it's all these knots that it doesn't wanna um, doesn't wanna this pin to go through it. All right, so the only other thing I want to make sure that we do is this these little guys. I want to feel like they're going out right, but I think we can maybe manage that without a pin. So all right, I think I'm gonna do the same. Gosh, this looks so much longer though than this, doesn't it? I'm gonna pull this out a little bit. See if I can stretch this. Whoa, see, that just wants to go somewhere else. <laughs> this one is just such a pile of crazy. But I'm, I'm happy I'm using it because uh, this is just going to go in the trash or something. Um, but then we, we finished it and I'm like, eh, it still looks like a T. I'm, I'm happy it's getting a home right away, though. That makes makes me smile. Well, I think that's just how it's going to be. <laughs> All right, let's get started. I'm going to use that same thread. I've just been pulling it off of an old bobbin. Man, I wonder if these fit in. Do you think normal like sewing bobbins fit in here? Probably not this one, but there's sewing bobbins that are thinner. Oh, I have one of those. Yeah, so it's like this size bobbin. Now, now I gotta find out. Have to find out. Oh man, come on, guy. <sighs> Try the other side. There we go. Um, <laughs> I'm just curious if you can put like a normal bobbin he in here. I guess I don't see really why not. 
oh, I'm a little afraid I'm not going to be able to get that out, but I think I could could get that in there. So theoretically, I could, um, you know, wind a bobbin um, on the machine, really. I suppose that's a benefit to these bobbin style ones. I know Sparrow Spite on um, uh, TikTok. Uh, this is their pattern right here. Uh, they really like, as far as I can tell, um, the one with the um, the little the little crochet hook on the, and the bobbin. So that's that's their primary um, shuttle typically. So I guess I don't know. I'm uh, like I said, I'm still learning, so I'm I'm curious the reasons why people um, use different things and you know the needle tatting versus the shuttle tatting, all that I think is interesting. Now that I'm now that I'm like learning, I gotta know all the things. Like why are they doing this? Why are they doing that? Okay. Boop. All right. Do I want to finish this in the same way? I guess I'm never ever gonna really use the pocket. So I'm going to just start it how I did the other one. I'm going to just start with a quilter's knot. I'm not going to like worry about having to tuck in the end of this thread somewhere because it's going to just live inside the pocket. That's fine. I'm going to do a really big quilter's knot. So I'm going around and around the needle a zillion times. Oh, my poor little needle is super bent. It's been like that for a while though. All right, here's my fat little knot. And I think I'll just leave the end too. Who cares? Um, Should I start at the top this time, or is it going to be... I kind of want to start at the bottom like I did before. Oops, I caught caught this Pico on there. On the... there we go. I'm wondering if it's going to be annoying to end up there. Maybe I should put the put this back in, in the pocket like I did the, the other thing. Um, Maybe that'll be helpful, actually, to not go through to the other side. I think I'm going to do that. And you know what? I'm, I'm going to start up here because I don't want to accidentally like start here and nudge everything up a little bit higher because this, this level I need to be where it is because I, I need, um, once this is shut, I need to be able to... Um, not have it cover up there. So I'm going to start at the top this time, but I am going to put this in here because I think that's that was helpful. Okay. So yeah, I'm going to just start right in the middle. Ooh, this angle is horrible, but we're getting it. Okay. Ooh, I have way more thread than I need to. Let's shorten that up. There we go. All right. Maybe I don't. I'm going to remove this now cause since I have my, my needle in there. All right. So I'm going to go around this spot a couple times just to kind of secure this first stitch. Ooh, this is definitely a thicker, thicker th fabric than uh, um, that quilting weight fabric that we just did for the. Uh, zipper pouch. Oop, caught on a pin. All right, so I think I think I'm in a decent enough position for this. So let's let's get going. I suppose I am. I'm not really using that paper yet, but I think I will when I get a little lower. Yay! I'm really excited about this. I can't wait till this jacket is just filled with random stuff. It's going to be so fun. Pile of crazy. I can be the crazy lady wearing the crazy house coat. <laughs> All right. Remove that pin. Oh, it already looks pretty without the pins. Okay. For now, this is annoying. You can stay out. All right, so 
we are basically just uh, applicating the sun. This is like the same technique that I use for basically needle turn applique. For quilting, we just don't have to um, turn anything. We're just tacking it down. All right, I'm gonna rotate a little bit now. Okay, I think now the paper's coming in because I can't stick my hand in there anymore. That's that's what I'm worried about. There, now I can hold like along the edge here and I'm, I know I'm not gonna go through to any other fabric. That's, that's my worry. Ugh, that button's gonna be in the way. We're gonna get it though. I am trying to shape this a little bit as I go, but again, this was that really kind of wonky letter T that we made and kind of wants to go wherever it wants to go. Oh man, you guys, I'm watching Harry Potter again, which I never felt any connection to, really. But now I'm watching um, the series again with, with John, and he hasn't seen him ever. And uh, I feel like I'm watching them with, with fresh eyes, and we've just been watching that, the first one, and it's just so cute and sweet. Having fun watching it. All right, this is all twisted, but we're going to just tack it all down. Yeah, I don't think, I think there's like a pico there, but it doesn't know what it wants to do, so I'm just going to hide it here. But we're still in the first, the first, um, first of the like eight films or whatever, and it's taken us days to watch and we're not done with it yet because we're just kind of watching it, you know, while we eat lunch or something, but, um, so it's a weird, that's how we've been watching all movies lately, just like, these three-hour movies like watching them over like six days or something it's been kind of weird weird way to watch a movie but it's been fun all right I'm gonna keep rotating here all right so I think I can just use my hands again now at the right angle for that so I'm not worried about this going through the wash at all at worst, I just have to stitch it on again, which I'm not expecting to have to do. The only way I'd see it be a problem is if there's, if there's like, I don't know, something in the wash that catches onto it, but like, it could catch onto anything. Man, it just looks so good when it's actually attached. It's just, it's like melding with the fabric, I feel like. So that's why I wanna like shape these a little bit more too. Just all of a sudden looks like it's in the right spot. It's just kind of fun. So I think um, we will, uh, we got 10 minutes or so yet, so we'll see how far we get. Um, but if we don't finish tonight, then we'll wrap this up real quick tomorrow. And uh, tomorrow I do wanna have the sewing machine out and let's, let's finish up that zipper pouch and try and repair that other zipper pouch. Dang, then that's like three projects checked off the list. That'll feel good. I haven't done my assessment on other unfinished projects. I do have um, piles of them. And, uh, you know, we have a lot of these quilting projects out here yet that we've been working on. And those um, are, a lot of them are near the quilting stage, but some, some have a couple more things to do before then. So uh, once we have the sewing machine back out here, that'll be good. And then we can then 
work on that a little bit. So that'll be this week and next week. And then the week after is embroidery of the month week. So we'll be stitching the little penguins, the penguin design is uh, this month's embroidery of the month. So that's the schedule basically for this month. And the last week we'll, we'll do some more finishing of things. And uh, we'll have an email and stuff too with our schedule for this coming year. It'll kind of start in February. This is kind of our finish up all these little low hanging fruit projects a uh, month. All right, this is one and it kind of move around all over and I'm, I think I'm gonna actually let it. So I'm gonna remove this pin and just kind of trying to flatten this out as I stitch. Oh, Rock and Robin says, I'm, I'm moving fast and I can't keep up, up with me. I, I do actively try and uh, go a little fast here. <laughs> just to finish finish projects and stuff um, <laughs> everything I do here is all saved on YouTube though so um, if there's any every time you want to rewind or, or look at something again it's it's all available there and we have been doing a whole lot of this applique with with a lot of these quilt projects so this is this is feeling very familiar to me like my hands know what to do uh, which is a, a nice feeling and i think my stitches are probably pretty big i'm i'm going a little further than i would maybe in needle turn applique This is such a silly letter T, which makes it perfect for this shirt. I don't know whether to call it a shirt or a coat. It's not really a coat. It's kind of heavy like a jean jacket, um, but it's like cut more like in like a shirt, but it's heavy like a, like a jean jacket. Um, I'm just gonna call it my house coat, I think. Perfect for this silly house coat. All right, I think I'm gonna remove this last pin down here too. So I don't think we'll finish this quite tonight. Ooh, and I don't think I have paper down here either. So I'm gonna get my hand in there just to make sure that I don't stitch through um, the pocket. Even though this is gonna be kind of awkward for my hand, but. So far, so good. Wow, there's a big seam down here. I'm gonna have to pay attention to you. Ugh. Actually, this is kind of annoying. Um, I suppose I could fold the fabric so it's that shape a little bit. I'm not intending to keep this pattern, so I know I'm folding the heck out of it. I, I printed it out in color, and I'm I'm saving the color one. <laughs> so I'm just I'm just gonna make a pocket shape and stick it right up in there and see if I can get that all the way to the end. And yep, that worked just fine. Okay, that's working much better. Grab my needle. I'd love to make it around the bend here though tonight yet, that'd be nice. Oh, that's pretty far, but good enough. Ooh, and I caught Pico. I'm glad I didn't start here. This is definitely way more awkward down at the bottom. Now we're moving in um, slow motion. Uh, we're gonna do embroidery, um, Rock and Robin, we're gonna do embroidery week three, like the, the third full week. So not next week, uh, but the week after. And that's gonna be our, um, 
our uh, penguins, penguins embroidery. So that's what we'll be stitching up. That's our embroidery of the month. I am in the middle of shipping all those out to you guys. Oh, uh, Teresa's asking if, if I missed you saying it, is this couching? So, um, no, this is, we're appliqueing it. So applique is basically, you know, it's technically kind of the same thing if you really think about it, Teresa. Um, couching and and applique so applique in my head a definition is stitching like tacking an object down to some sort of back fabric to me that's an that's applique and technically i suppose that's how you describe couching as well but for couching um in my head you're just kind of holding down like one piece of thread by stitching little stitches over the top so we're just kind of doing that on the edge here. So I think this would be applique. Oh, is this even flipped in the wrong direction? There we go. <laughs> All right, it's like that. And we're gonna just get it right up against this other bit here, I think. So the actual, this, this, um, this letter T though is done with tatting. So, um, the construction of this actual piece is is tatting, but what we're currently doing is I'm just appliquing it, appliquing the tatted piece to my jean jacket shirt house coat, <laughs> whatever we're calling that. Oop, caught the button again. There, I, I am getting this flattened out though, which I like, so it has more of that bottom of the, the letter T. And I want this one to be flat too, so I'd like to get that much done tonight. Then we can crawl up the other side on, um, on the up, up this side here and around the bend again. We'll do that tomorrow. Tomorrow, and then also some sewing. Oops. Let's get that wobble. All right. And now I think, in theory, I think I want to use my hand again. I'm, it's just when I get at the right angle is like this way, it's easy for to put my hand in, in here, and then it's more like a normal position for me but it's that other direction that that paper was really helpful. Okay, so let's angle this just right. Okay, I'm gonna hold it there. Yeah. Whew, there, does not wanna go up through that thread sometimes. So this feels kind of dirty, this thread. I, I, I'm wondering if, I know it is time to do this, but I, I'm thinking that that's why it's dirty, but I, I need to clean my iron. Gosh, maybe that's something we should do uh, this week too. I just like all of those little, like I said, low hanging fruit projects just to need to get done. Like, and then we can just feel fresh and ready to go. Uh, and I think maybe I need to add, all right, I'm gonna put this back in. I need to add um, cleaning the iron to that because I think it's making this dirty. I'm not worried about it though because this is gonna get washed and I'm hoping that just gets cleaned up. Oh, it's coming together though, so cute. Yeah, so this side is stitched down and now we're going up this side. Um, and I think, like I said, I'm just gonna finish this bottom ring here just to get it kind of secured where I want. And then the rest will finish up tomorrow. I think I'll just get it so I'm coming up that other side there. All right, and let's just throw our needle minder in there. So I don't lose that needle. <laughs> and there we go. So that's the start of, let's 
try and arrange this again. Hold on. There we go. So this is the start of our little letter T pocket. <laughs> it's so silly. I love it. It's so just silly. It'll go with the little heart applique. <laughs> and here is uh, that zipper pouch with our letter T on. So this guy we finished, except for sewing shut that lining piece. So tomorrow, tomorrow we'll do a whole pile of things. Tomorrow we'll finish stitching this up, then that will be done. So that's a whole project done, which is freaking fabulous. Then we'll get the sewing machine. We will sew up uh, the hole that we opened in the lining here that helped us stitch this on. And then we'll also uh, start to, or maybe we'll even finish this, which will be awesome. I have to take this seam apart. I, I sew the zipper wrong and it's annoying me and I wanna fix it. Um, and actually we still have all the blue water soluble marking lines on here. We could we could dab those away too. That would be, that'd be great. So that, um, those three sort of projects, Oh, Teresa says, I'm afraid to make a UFO list. So UFO in the quilt and sewing land is like an unfinished object. So those are like all your projects that you don't have done. I am going to do that. I'm determined sometime this week to do that because I, I just got to get a handle on like where my quilts are at because I know those are just kind of all over the place. Here, I'm going to turn this. Uh, so those are my quilts are all over the place on how much they're done. Like, I don't remember, I don't remember the ones that I actually finished the back completely and what ones I still need to finish the back with or like what's pinned together and what's not. And then I have like all these, you know, little projects just hanging out. And I thought, you know, let's just document them all. <laughs> just get them down and uh, just live with whatever that has to tell me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, at least some of these smaller ideas that I've been wanting to do. We'll finish up these little things, like these little repairs. I'd like to, like I said, hem my pants, my jeans that I have. Uh, and uh, then we have this sweater that we were going to do that uh, the steaking or whatever we're going to do uh, that we talked about last night. Here's that sweater. I want to I want to cut open the front and then uh, put an edging on those sides so it can be more of a cardigan. So that will happen as well, hopefully, uh, getting all these projects wrapped up. So that'll be fun. So anywho, that is that for tonight. Uh, thanks again for all your uh, penguin orders, the uh, embroidery of the month. I am still working on giving those out. A whole nother batch is going out tomorrow and then the last batch will go out uh, the next day. So uh, they will be to you soon. And uh, that needle minder is the uh, special gift with the kit for this month. Uh, and then we'll be, uh, whatever needle minders we have left, uh, we'll, we'll put up in the shop probably mid-month if you're looking for one of those uh, needle minders. But they do come free with the uh, Embroidery of the Month kit this month. So that's that. Um, all right. I will see you guys tomorrow. I'm just checking out the comments. And I think we're good. Have a great evening. Good night.